Welcome to Queen of Peace. Our hymn, first hymn, will be 247, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the String. 247. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We speak of three comings of Christ. The first time he came in weakness as a baby. And we did kill him, as you know. He came to us in history, time past. He comes to us at every Mass in mystery, like Christ is present at this moment. And he will come to us in the Word, and he will come to us when we receive Holy Communion. And then Christ will come again in glory soon to judge the living and the dead. And the Book of Revelation says, I will indeed be with you soon. Brothers, sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope in the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter the readings can be found on page 483 of the Vatican II hymnal, page 483. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, that through the mouth of the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. 
But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because the ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to all these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus did something after he rose from the dead for his apostles. Uh, he opened up their minds 
so that they could understand the scriptures. So I want you to know that that's my prayer for us at Queen of Peace. I'm asking the Lord to open up our minds so that we will understand the scripture. It's a good prayer. It's a good prayer, even if I say so myself. <laughs> okay. And it can be done. It can be done. You may not notice it, but most of the Bible is on the walls of this church. So. Okay. Um, around Christmas time, we, at least I talk about uh, the three comings of Christ, that he came to us in history, he comes to us in mystery, and he will come again in glory soon to judge the living and the dead. Now, he came to us in history. It's um, 2,024 years since Jesus walked the earth. He came to us in history. He comes to us at every Mass. He comes to us in mystery. Like the same Jesus who died on the cross is present in this church. He comes to us in mystery. And then he will come again in glory uh, soon to judge the living and the dead. And you say, priest, how do you know it's soon? <laughs> well, um, if you read the last five verses of the Bible, the book of Revelations, it tells you, I will indeed be with you soon. So I didn't make it up as I went along. Okay. Now, however, the focus today has to be, since we're in Easter, uh, on the resurrection. And so we'll talk about the different appearances of Jesus after he rose from the dead. It must have been extraordinary. So he appeared first to Mary of Magdala. And you know Mary was the one who was possessed by seven devils. Anyway, he appeared to her first, first. Um, then he appeared twice to the apostles in the upper room. A bunch of wimps the apostles were. They were hiding away. They were afraid that what happened to Jesus would happen to them. To them. And in spite of the locked doors, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them. And he said to them, peace be with you in spite of the locked doors. So apparently the resurrection, the resurrected body can appear any place it wishes. It happened that Thomas, doubting Thomas, uh, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came at, at the upper room time. And when the apostles told them um, Thomas, we have seen the Lord. He said, I'll never believe it. I'll never believe it. You're hallucinating. And so a short time later, then, when Thomas was with them, uh, Jesus manifested himself again. And he said to Thomas, here, he said, doubting Thomas, uh, put your fingers into the wounds in my hands. And Put your hand into my side and do not persist in your unbelief, but believe. And then he also appeared to two of the disciples who were going a seven mile journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they were discussing this as they walked along. And Jesus walked up to them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he did something that I'm asking him to do for us. Uh, he opened up their minds to understanding the scripture. I believe it can be done. That Jesus will, will, will teach us. And then the, the last was maybe second last. 
Um, he appeared to, we don't mention this much for some reason or other, but it's in the good book. He appeared to 500 of the brothers all at the same time. So the resurrection was very real. Now, Saint Paul, he also appeared to, to St. Paul, who was not one of the 12 apostles. And so, like Paul was like, like an illegitimate birth, kind of, you know, in terms of the apostles. He was a persecutor of the church, but Jesus appeared to him. The Corinthian church were bugging St. Paul. They wanted to know from St. Paul, what kind of body will we have uh, when we are raised from the dead? And uh, Paul said to them, these are foolish questions. Well, I don't think it was that foolish, really. So, but what, what Paul did say, this is, might be helpful a little bit. Um, he said, when a seed falls into the ground and dies, he said, what comes out of the ground is completely different than what, from what went into the ground. Like, take these flowers here. All of these started with a seed that fell into the ground. And now look, now look. And no disrespect here, but all the governments in the world put together cannot make a flower. They can, they can bomb the place, but they can't make flowers. So in the same way that uh, your resurrected body will be something glorious, just something glorious. So he came to us in history, uh, 2,024 years ago. Uh, he comes to us in mystery. Now, this is probably hard for us to get. Um, we have seven sacraments in the church. Baptism, um, first confession, um, confirmation, first holy communion, marriage, priesthood, and the last rites. They used to call them mysteries. I, I wish we could, could, could go back to that, the seven mysteries. And here's what's important about it. Take, for instance, Father Chenoy is not here, so I can talk about him. <laughs> um, when he was ordained, just as I was ordained uh, to the priesthood, um, the risen Christ, even though we didn't see it at the time, entered into us. And so the priest, whether he knows it or not, speaks with the eye of Christ. Like, I baptize you, I absolve you, I confirm you, I join you in marriage, I, I anoint you. This is the mystery, the mystery of the priesthood. This is me talking here. I, I don't believe most priests even remotely understand that or grasp it. Yet if, if they listen to themselves in action, like look what the priest does at Mass, for instance. He said, take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body. The priest speaks with the eye of Christ because... Um, <laughs> No priest can, can change bread and wine into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, but Christ himself can. So he comes to us in history, he comes to us in mystery. One of the greatest things for me about uh, coming in mystery, you mightn't like this now, but I'm not, I'm not gonna say it just to get you upset or anything, um, but Christ is present in us. whether you like it or not. He's present in us. That probably will make sense for you of the last judgment. When the last judgment comes of the whole world, um, Jesus will be judging the uh, pagans, 
you know, the non-Christians. He, he'd be judging the, the Hindus, uh, the Buddhists, uh, whatever, the Taoists, the philosophers, the atheists, the agnostics. He'd be judging them. And what he will say to them, the ones who are going to heaven with him, he'll say to them, um, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick, you came to visit me. And they will say to Jesus, when did we do this for you? We didn't even know you. And he will say, whatever, whatever you did to the least of my brothers, you did it for me. Now, I'm not trying to be twist or turn anything, but everybody on the face of the planet is Christ. Remember the little boy who kept asking me, are you Christ? Are you Christ? What I do to you, I do to Christ. So they're judged at that time. So he comes to us in history, he comes to us in mystery, and then he comes again in glory soon. That's all I can say is soon. That's what the scripture says. He'll come again in glory soon, in glory. And the in glory part simply says that the universe will disappear all around us like with a roar. And we will see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in great power and glory. Okay, I'm done. I want you please to remember, please, that he comes to us in history, time past. He comes to us in mystery, time now. And he will come to us in glory, time future. in peace I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe the Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Let those who were baptized at Easter may grow ever stronger in their faith and be powerful witnesses of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord For civil leaders and lawmakers, that the light and wisdom of Christ will illumine their decisions and strengthen them to pursue truth and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian families, that they will sanctify Christ as Lord in their hearts and homes, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to understand and love the words of Christ and the scriptures more deeply, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we recognize Jesus in broken bread, so we may recognize him in broken lives, including those we consider burdensome, inconvenient, and unwanted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hymn number 308, Blessed Jesus at Thy Word, 308. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, 
Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Tabor, Felix and Chariot Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, Revenge it in Domine Domini, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, to this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Joseph and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Sing to 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks to God. God. Hymn number 248, Be Joyful, Mary Heavenly Queen, 248. <laughs> 